Hi friends! Welcome to The Overcomers, a movement and a group of people who have overcome and they've got a story. That's what The Overcomers is all about. You sharing your story. Why? Because there is power in your story and people need you. They need your voice. They need your story of hope, faith, and inspiration that where they're at right now is not the end. They need to know if you can overcome, so can they. Today, I'm excited to share with you another story of one such overcomer. So let's go check out who it is. I'm honored to be here today with my friend, Mary Deacetis. Mary, thank you so much for joining us today. What's up, Jen? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love your energy already. So a few things about Mary, for those of you who don't know my amazing friend right here, she is the daughter of two awesome parents who she actually restored and renewed relationships with. She's the owner of a digital marketing agency who helps people share their dreams with the world. She's originally from Bernie, Texas, but now she <laughs> lives in Naples, Florida. And that's a story in and of itself. That's really fun to hear. <laughs> Mary loves life. If you haven't noticed already by her purple hair, <laughs> she loves to live it to the extreme. She loves to have fun and there you have it. <laughs> Is that a disco um, light? This is, this is facts. I would have to say facts. <laughs> That's a microphone. Does that microphone work? I just have to ask. It did. At one point I cut off the stem because I couldn't do the cord and um, well, I glittered all of it. So I did at one point. <laughs> oh my gosh. So amazing. <laughs> Only you would do that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> which accentuates exactly who you are. You're so full of life and joy and passion. It just exudes from everything that you are. And that brings me back to so much of what I love about you. Um, but what I'm blown away most by Mary in you is your resiliency in spirit. Sure, we all have hard things happen to us and maybe we don't even know all that has happened to you. But every time I see you show up, whether that's in person or on social media, <laughs> you are giving so much of yourself to the world. You give life, joy, passion, and fire in a world that needs, quite frankly, a defibrillator to the pursuance of their freedom, mm. to what this life can be. And you show us that every single day. You inspire me and you inspire so many people just by showing up and being who, who, who he created you to be. So I'm excited to be here with you today <laughs> for you to inspire those who are listening. And I can't wait for you to share your story with them because it's going to be amazing and they need to hear it. You're an overcomer and most people don't know that. So Mary, <laughs> tell us your story. How did you go from where you used to be to where you are now? And feel free to like back up in time and, and take us back there. I did. No, Jen, seriously, like, I'm like, holy cow, I did not know you were going to say that. And I so appreciate it um, because like I, like you and yourself and who you are and the overcomers movement and everything that you've done, like you inspire people daily. And it is like incredible the fact that, cause I've heard part of you like sharing your story and you writing the book and you starting this movement. And so I've heard that like, hey, that wasn't an easy journey. And I think that I like always had this impression that like, oh, somebody else is different than I am. So like Jen has something that I don't in the fact that she can write a book and she can share her story. And I'm over here like about to poop my pants, like scared about like sharing um, part of my story. And I'm like, oh, she has something different. But like you are somebody who has even overcome the fear, overcome all of this because it's who you are. And the fact that you always point things to the father and like, it is so freaking inspiring. And that's like a huge reason why I'm even like have the cojones to like share today because like I've listened to you and you share other people's stories so that the people who listen can be inspired and know that like we all have stories to share and like point them to the father because it's not about me. 
And it's about him. And you've been so instrumental in like helping me with that. And I know like helping already thousands of other people about that. So thank you. I appreciate it and appreciate you like hosting this and everything else. So it's a pleasure and an honor friend. And, and I love that you started there because it's so true. We all think that people who can be that vulnerable or people who that are out there doing what they want to do at the deepest core of who they are. And you know, they've overcome these fears that were maybe in the way of stopping them from doing that, that there's some sort of unique human being that, that I'm not, but that's not true. We were all born with the gift of being able to overcome hard things. That's all inside of all of us at birth. Yet we think we don't have that. Mm -hmm. So I love that you've grasped onto that message and, and embodied it and are doing it. Like here you are today, like even you showing up today for the interview, you know, in talking with you this last week was overcoming more. Share with us even what happened in this last week with you. Oh my gosh, this past week has been like insane. There's so many different like ways that I could go with this. And I'm just going to like trust that the way that I'm going is the right way. But um, I feel like I've been on like a personal development journey of like uprooting the like roots of like a big oak tree for like the past two and a half years. So like have gone deeper, like uprooted, like a lot of garbage that like did not belong there. And so this week, and decided to make a huge change in my business that I was not expecting at all. Um, and it, like made the hard phone calls and let people know that like, hey, this was the decision that I was gonna make. And I felt so much peace about it. And I felt so much peace like in like what the father was doing and the fact that like, hey, like this is gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay because like it was a huge income stream for me. And so like believing in him. And so it was last Monday, um, it's eight days ago now, by the time we're like actually filming this. So I'm like, all right, we got to take massive action people. Um, so I made that decision, like was processing all of it, praying through it. And I messaged Jen that night because like the Lord was doing a work in so many different things. It was like, I made that decision. I made those hard calls. And then there were like five other, um, people who got highlighted in my head, like, Hey, you need to reach out to these people. You need to talk to them. And one of them was Jen. And what I think is so cool is the fact that Jen and I met like, in November, it's currently May. So I don't know, whatever that distance is. Um, and the day that I met Jen and like, I'd heard about her book cause we're like both in the same community, but like we hadn't like become friends yet. Like I told her, I was like, I have a friend crush on you. Like I want to be friends <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we did, and it was so good. And I got to read her book and it was freaking incredible. Oh my gosh. Um, and I felt the Lord being like, you're going to share your story with her. And I said, oh, like, Holy Spirit, you're tripping. Like, <laughs> like, no, no. And I brushed it off, but it like, wasn't a sense of like pressure or urgency or anything. But like, I just remember that weekend meeting you, it was like just a small, still voice. And it was, it like was calming, but I was like, all right, whatever. Jen and I like have con continued our relationship, like had FaceTime calls and like, you know, met up and everything else. And every single time I talked to Jen, like I felt like the spirit being like, Hey, like you're going to share your story with her one day. And so I felt like I had been prepared for it for whatever the past, however many months, six, seven months. And on Monday, when I like made all of these like choices and changes, one of them was like texting Jen. And I don't even remember what I said. I think it was like, Hey, are you looking for more people to like share about the overcomers? Like, I feel like I need to share my story with you. And she was like, cool. Like what you got? And I like sent her a Marco that night because I knew that if I didn't, then I would um, back out. Eh, I don't even know that, but I knew that I I'm big on like making it easy to succeed. And I knew that if I shared it with her, then if I acted when I felt that, um, the spirit rising up in me, then like, it would be easier to be on this call and share with you now. And so I like Marcoed her and I shared my story. And like, I really feel like what the Lord has like done in me is that he's done a lot of different things as he's done with you, as he's done with Jen, like in all of us, maybe we just haven't realized it, but so much of it was, um, taking what I had believed as like truth and like holding on to like lies that I had held on that I believed were truth. And so I had like stayed in the shadows and I had stayed small. And you may be like, you have purple hair. Like nobody with purple hair is going to say that they like stayed <laughs> small, but it's no, it's been a like stepping stone of the fact that like going back to elementary school and like was bullied for the fact that I had freckles. Like 
I can cover freckles up with like foundation now, but like I got like all these little things on my arms. And so believing that like, because of that, because I had freckles and people would like make fun of them, that that meant that like my skin was ugly and I needed to hide it. And like, it was horrible. And I believe that as truth. It was using like lies and different things that I had been told and nobody meant it maliciously. Like, I truly don't believe that because I truly don't believe that people are malicious at heart. I believe that like, we all have things that we go through, but anyways, that's another story for another time. And using these as truth, it was using like being taken advantage of. Like part of my story is I was raped six years ago and like taking that as a reason to like stay small and like taking that as truth that like, oh, I deserved it or like, oh, it was my fault. And it's like, no, and looking at it and flipping the script and being like, even after that, like even like through all of it, like the Lord was like, had his hand in it. And you may be like, Mary, like, what does that even mean? Like, how would the Lord have his hand? But I saw it. I saw the fact that I had been signed up for camp, like a summer camp that I wasn't supposed to be a leader at because I was never a camper and they don't let, they, in the, when I was a leader or whatever, they hadn't let people who weren't campers um, be leaders at this camp. So the fact that I was already signed up for this, it's like a week or two after it happened. I like went to the camp and was able to be like, oh, that's what happened. Like, and put a label on it and be like, Lord, like what the heck? Like, I don't understand like what is happening and like process all of that and like give it to the Lord. And this has been a continual process of like giving it back to the Lord and like being able to share about it because I didn't for so long. Like I haven't told friends about it because again, I believed a truth of the fact that like when I had told friends in the pack, they hadn't known how to respond, which again is like, okay. And that's not on them, but they had responded in a way that I took it as again, I was wrong. And like, I like screwed up and I had to keep this in the shadows and I had to keep this in the darkness mm -hmm. because if anybody knew, if anybody found out, then like, I wouldn't have any friends anymore. I wouldn't have a business anymore. I wouldn't like, I would be ostracized and like basically be a leper. Like that is the truth that I had believed if I shared that with anyone. And wow, just like, you know, anyways. Um, so through all of this, like, I feel like the Lord has been like, no, like it's not about you. And like, if you share this, if you bring this into the light, then like I can use it and I can um, use it because it's not about me. It's not about my bad decisions in any of the bad decisions that I made because like, thank the freaking Lord, like, hello, there is forgiveness. Like, gosh, I'd be screwed if there wasn't. <laughs> wow, friend, wow. <laughs> you know what I love about what you just shared is that we all have stuff that we go through, whether it happens to us or we choose it, we're part of that happening. We all have stuff we go through that causes these thoughts in our head that keep us in a position of being afraid, being afraid of whatever it is that we actually want. So all these things that happen, these circumstances happen, they impact us, they get, they get like into a storm up here and a storm in here and they keep us stuck. And what's so beautiful about what you just shared is that it is a process of overcoming. It is a process of working through those circumstances and realizing that he has already forgiven us and he has already forgiven them and learning what that means and walking in that and choosing it and digging deep and processing through those things that happened and being in a position where you're willing to receive the forgiveness of even yourself. And I remember a conversation we had just this last week after everything that you had been through and that you were sharing with me, and it was awful that you had come to this place of realizing that that was important and that you needed to do that. Well, all of us would agree with the fact that what happened was not okay and was not your fault and you didn't deserve it. Yet you had come to a realization that maybe there's a layer of even needing to forgive myself in that. That's amazing. That is a place of of humility and ownership of just your own spirit, your own mind and your own body in a way that many of us aren't willing to recognize. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's something that like, I felt like that was almost like the final tie. Actually, I feel like this was the final tie of being like, that's not going to keep me in darkness anymore. Like that story isn't going to be held in the darkness anymore. Um, and like forgiving myself was like a big aspect of that because like I had, um, 
been like, well, if I had only done like X, Y, and Z, you know, we play the what if game in our head um, and like all of that, but it was being like, hey, you know, like there is forgiveness in this and thank God again, that there is forgiveness. And it was crazy. Cause I said last week was so like crazy for me in so many different ways. Um, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I get mad at God and like, I'm like grateful that like he has big shoulders and like, he can take it. But, um, last week I was like walking on the beach and I was like pissed, like legitimately, like I was angry at God. And I was like, why the frick am I like having to forgive all of these people? Why am I having to forgive myself? Like we've gone through this before God, like I have been here, like we have done this forgiveness before. And like, it was like new stuff that got built up plus like old things. And I like sometimes have conversations with God and I feel like he's a little bit sarcastic with me because I'm sarcastic and like, I like appreciate that. And I felt him saying in that moment, like, what's the alternative? Like you sit in a room and you like, don't talk to anyone. You don't have any fun. Like you don't do anything and you don't live your life. Like forgiveness is going to happen, going to need to happen if you want to continue to grow. <laughs> Otherwise like sit in a dark room. And I was like, all right, well, got over my temper tantrum real fast over that. And uh, it was good. <laughs> but yeah, forgiving myself. It was, I grew up in the church. And so I'd always heard like, hey, forgive your neighbor, forgive other people. And for a while I'd done it out of a place of like obligation, not because I actually wanted to, but I was like, well, like this is what my pastor told me. And this is what the Bible told me. And yes, that is true. But I didn't do it because like I actually felt it. I was like, ah, oh, check. Like I said the prayer, like, hey, I forgive you. But realizing that I had to forgive myself as well, and that was another layer of it, was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so. Wow, so good. Like, you reminded me of the fact that in circumstances like this, where there there isn't any place for anyone to be like, oh, it's your fault, or oh, you should have done this, or you should have done that. In the, same, in the same way that in my story, like, I didn't know I was carrying the fact that I wish I could have done more for my dad. Yet I was beating myself up and I didn't know it. And I had to walk through forgiveness of thinking I could have done more, thinking I wasn't good enough for him to stay. But wait a minute, it's not my fault that he died. And so there's so many things that happen to us in life where we we get all these thoughts in our head that aren't actually even true, but, but, but it's because we care. We love ourselves. We love the other person. We love, we love life. We love the father, but we still have to work through some weird, crazy thought that entered into our brain that doesn't even actually make sense, mm -hmm. but we allowed it in there and we got to like work through forgiveness of it. And this is a perfect example of that. It affected you and it started messing with, with your thinking on that matter. And so there is a forgiveness element to work through in order to get your, your mind and your emotions to a place of feeling free and not stuck in the darkness, like you said. I mean, anyone listening today, can you imagine Mary <laughs> not living her life to the full potential of what she is called to be, who she is called to be, and the inspirer that she is meant to be in this life with how bold, beautiful, and passionate you are. It would be such a travesty for you to stay in darkness because that is a natural gift. Not every single person listening today has the guts to have purple hair <laughs> or a microphone that doesn't work and, and carries it around proudly. <laughs> you make life fun and life would be so gypped if you didn't bring that fun to the world. And you allowed that to keep you stuck. So I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Will you share with us more about your journey with your parents and coming to that place of, you know, being restored and renewed? I, I know you went through a lot of transformation these last few years, uh, and I've been privileged to see some of it happen, um, especially here on the tail end of the last three years. Um, but kind of back us up, like, what happened with your, your mom and dad? Yeah, so... Um... Like, I love my parents and like, I finally got to the point, like my parents are doing the very best that they can at any given moment. And 
I think a lot of that was realizing that like, hey, there are people too who have had their own experiences. And so like through all of this, like my parents got divorced when I was going to sixth grade, like through even them getting divorced, like the choices that they made, like they were doing the very best that they could at any given moment. And so once I realized that, like so much pressure and stress was like broken and everything else. But um, one of like the biggest transformation is like, actually I have a relationship with my parents. I was really, really bitter and angry at them um, for a long time. Like if I look back to me in high school, um, I was like a bitter and angry person. Like I was so angry at the world. Like I was nasty um, because like I was hurting. And like, I like let other, I, anyways, I was bitter, angry and like just angry. And majority of that anger went towards my parents. So crazy to think about now, like how upset I was for, um, even part of middle school too. And then high school, but anyways, um, so the biggest like transformation story I think is with my mom. Um, so my mom, I have always lived with my mom and, um, like we butt heads a lot. And I think that there were a lot of different factors that went into that. But I remember like specifically, like I came out in like booty shorts one day, had gone shopping with my friends and like came out with booty shorts and just like, you know, like, was like, my mom's like the worst, she's out to get me. And like, oh my gosh, all of the dramatics and all of that, but things like that, where I thought that she was here to like make my life horrible and was like so mean and that kind of built up on each other. And um, my mom and I didn't talk for like, didn't ha actually have like a real relationship. It was a lot of fighting. It was a lot of me being mad at her because, you know, I was in booty shorts that I shouldn't have been wearing anyways. And she, <laughs> you know, told me I couldn't go out and wear them. It was, um, her just being a mom really. And, um, we would have these wars like, oh my gosh, they were all out wars. I'm surprised our neighbors didn't hear them, but, um, about two and a half years ago, my mom started going to a conference and long story short, incredible conference, like changed both of our lives. Um, so grateful for Danny Johnson and what she teaches. And like, honestly, what the Lord has done like through Danny and through us, um, because I saw like a transformation in my mom as she started going to these conferences and as she started like learning new things. And as she started, um, going through forgiveness was honestly like the biggest thing. So like her going through forgiveness on her own. And then me like learning about that and forgiving both of my parents for, again, the decisions that they made that like, again, they were doing the best that they could. Um, I think that the biggest thing is like my mom and I don't have wars anymore. Like my mom's one of my best friends. I call her all the time. Um, she is at like a training right now. Uh, she's been there since Sunday and I like haven't talked to her all week. I know it's like Tuesday. So it's been like three days, but like, it's been so weird. Like the last time I talked to her was Friday and I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. Like I haven't talked to my mom. My mom and I work together in business now, which is crazy. Like we actually can communicate and it not end up like in us fighting. And, um, like, it's such a transformation from like where we were before. And it's so cool because like, I love like learning from my parents and I love hearing them. Whereas like in the past, I was like, nah, like they don't know what they're talking about. Like, um, I don't have any knowledge. And so it's been really cool. Like that transformation. And my dad came and visited me in Florida and, um, that was like, oh my gosh, that means so much to me that he flew from Texas to come visit me in Florida and spent like four days with me. And we had the best time. And like, it was like the best trip that we've ever taken. And um, we went on like family vacations growing up, but like the fact that he like came and um, spent the weekend with me was like amazing. And I like, wouldn't have even wanted my parents to come. Like when I was like in high school, I was like, I'm going to leave. Like I picked a college that was far enough away so that they couldn't come up every weekend. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing that transformation and seeing everything else. Um, oh my gosh. I can't even describe, like put into words, like I feel like it was a 360 change because like it was almost like a spiral where like we are not even kind of in the place that we were before, but like every aspect of the relationship has changed. So. Wow. It's so beautiful. I love, I love how much you have seen forgiveness, like change so many facets of who you are, your life and experience so many new freedoms. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in, in applying something that you learned and was a trickle effect of your mom learning too, like it has dynamically changed so much for you. How does it feel to now be, you know, you've done, what is it? Three years of, of learning from this amazing coach, which I also have the same coach, uh, and have had amazing results because of the same impact of her teaching. Um, but how does it feel to now have had three years of amazing training, all this healing, going from so much darkness to so much new life and new light and freedoms, including being the owner of a digital marketing agency that's crazy successful and everybody's like, show me how you're doing this. How does this feel to be at this place now? It like almost brings me to tears, like thinking about, because I think about it and I'm 23. Um, so I started <laughs> <I'm> so young. <laughs> I started going to Danny Johnson conferences like a month after I turned 21. Um, and the, I talked about my mom, the change in that, um, one of the things that Danny teaches about is personality traits. And if you go, which like, I challenge you to go and see if it's like works for you because I don't know, it worked for me. And, um, my mom and I are opposite personalities. And so like, I love birthdays. Like I love being able to celebrate people and the celebrations and the fun and the noise and like all of it. And my mom never understood that about birthdays, like why I liked them. And for my 21st birthday, this was um, a couple months after my mom had started going to the conferences and she learned about like what motivates me. And what, what, one of the things that motivates me is fun. And she like decorated the house. She got like champagne bottles and she made pancakes and like she got balloons everywhere and like put up streamers and like had never like gone to this extreme for my 21st birthday and I like walked out of my room and I like started crying I was like oh my gosh and so that was kind of like the transformation for me and being like okay like something's changed in my mom and it was like the turning point um and so like going to those conferences like I remember right before my birthday, I was interviewing counselors to learn how to take the, what is it, GED or I'm not the GED. I don't know, whatever the test is to get into like, to take your master's, to get your master's. Um, there's some tests to do, go to your grad school. I don't remember what it's called, but I was interviewing counselors to teach me how to um, take this text because I'm dyslexic. Like I get distracted really easily. I was dyslexic. I don't like using that label anymore. Um, I get distracted really easily. And I like, had the, again, the belief that I was dumb. And so, I, but I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I knew that I had one more year of college. I was graduating a semester early because I was out of credits. Um, and I was like, all right, master's, like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, this just seems like the next right step when I hate school. Like I hate the traditional of like sitting down and like learning for like eight hours a day, like that feels miserable to me. And so it was crazy that like, that's where I was. And I just accepted the fact that like, I knew that I liked being able to like explore and like not be chained to a desk all day, but I'd accepted that this was the right way to do life. And so I had to take this next step of going and getting my master's and then figuring it out and getting a nine to five. And today um, I moved to Florida 10 months ago, nine months ago, because I wanted to. I have a digital marketing agency where I get to help people share their dream with the world. I'm completely debt-free. I paid off about $34,000 in 18 months. Um, yeah, own my car, like student loan debt is gone. Um, I give thousands of dollars every single month to give people water for life because the fact that people do not have access to clean water pisses me off. Um, I like, again, have re restored relationships with my parents, like with my siblings, my siblings, I freaking love those people. I, um, understand how to talk to people. Like I'm able to grow my business, like not let fear be the defining thing for me, like be able to push past the fear that I have, like literally in every single area of my life. Like I'm able to have fun. I travel about every other week. Like I go on trips. Um, one to two times a month because I want to, and like I have business and fun and friends and everything else. And like, I'm like literally sharing this because I did not imagine my life being like this. And it's the concept of like life by design and not by default. And I shared this with Jen last week as well, um, of the fact of like, I had this like thought in this vision of like, what if the Lord like literally has a cake for us? Like mm -hmm. he has like, think of the most beautiful cake 
that you could possibly think of. Like it's decorated beautifully. Like maybe for you, it's an ice cream cake. Like, I don't know, Jen, like what is, what kind of cake do you want? Like I want a pie with, with lots of fruit in it, maybe a little bit of sourness and you're liking a sour beer. Sorry. All right. I love it. A pie, a sour pie, like whatever it is, envision the most beautiful, like delicious cake that you could ever imagine. And the Lord's like, I have this cake for you. Like, here you go. You can have it if you want. And we're like, I'll just take a bite of the frosting. Like, oh no, 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 no. Like it, uh, maybe I'll take a little bite of the, um, the actual cake. And the Lord's like, I have a huge cake for you. You can have the whole thing, but you have to ask for it. Mm-hmm. So anyways, all of that to say, like looking back in the past three years, like I feel like I've gotten a picture of it. And I feel like even still, like I only have like a little bit of the slice of my cake. Um, <laughs> just realized. Max. George is meowing. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. <laughs> make it make it fun it's it's just real life cake (laughs) yeah so anyways the lord has this giant cake for us and it's just like are you gonna ask for it or not and like he has all of this but like there's steps that you have to take and i'm not going to get the entire cake at once you know if i start asking for more of it like it's going to come in steps Mm. because if he gave me the entire cake like i would be overwhelmed (laughs) you would puke yeah (laughs) (laughs) or get the other stuff (laughs) Both are bad. The other end. <laughs> not good, not good. Such a perfect analogy. But I love the the play off of um, realizing that the only reason that we're afraid to ask for more is because of fear. Isn't that crazy that we're afraid to ask for more of what we actually want? Right? So crazy. And I think a lot of that is the fear of what if he says no? Mm-hmm. Like, but what if he says yes? Like, what if? Time to put your party pants on then. Party pants, party mic. Like, we got the disco ball. Here, here, here. Yes. Take me there. (laughs) I want to come to the party. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Oh, man. I I was about to say, imagine if we said to the father, I want to come to the party. He'd be like, yeah, there's the energy I was waiting for. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, in every area of our life. So good. So good. And I love that you have that authentic of a relationship with him where you're like talking to him and you're like, you be tripping. <laughs> so good. I feel like so many times we like, we get stuck in thinking that there's a certain way we got to talk to him. And no, you just got to talk to him in the way that you would talk to a best friend. Because you know what? He wants us to be real and to be genuine and to be authentic with what we're actually feeling. Like, it's okay to cry with him. It's okay to get mad. He wants to help walk us through those feelings and emotions emotions, and get us to the other side. He wants us to be free. And you were part of the reason why I, like, got to this place. I grew up in the Catholic Church where it was very, like, the Catholic Church is amazing for some people, but, like, what I took from it was that, like, it had to be, like, very rigid and your faith wasn't something that was, like, flexible. And I am not a rigid person. And so Jen, hearing you and hearing the way that you talked to the father, I was like, what if I tried it? (laughs) Like, what if I like, you know, cause I think about it and I'm like, he put this inside of me. Like he put the fact that I'm like, what's up party people? Like that. I love these types of things. Like he planted that in me. So like, what if he has that as well? And so I tried it and I was like, wait, I kind of like this. And so (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. I imagine he is taking great delight in that because he designed you to be that way. So he's like, yes, there's my Mary. There she is. She's set free. She's no longer in darkness. She's living in the light, continuing to pursue the light. Because let's be real, life isn't perfect. Life isn't easy. Even when we've overcome one thing, there's going to probably be more things you're going to need to overcome but you're on that path. You're overcoming so hard things. That wasn't proper English, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you're overcoming tough stuff. And that's, that's the real truth of it. That's the real heart of it. And you've grasped that. So I'm excited for what your future looks like because it's already exciting. I can't believe you're only 23 years old and this is your life. Could you imagine your life being like that. I'm talking to you listening right now. Can you imagine your life at 23 years old 
being the owner of a successful digital marketing agency to the point that people two, three times your age are coming to you saying, show me how, show me how, what the heck are you doing? Imagine that being you. So as we're wrapping up the tail end of this interview, I have a few very specific questions for you. And first, I know there's a lot of people listening today that have heard your story and are inspired by everything that you've overcome. And they're also inspired that you have such a heart to help other people. And you've kind of, you know, dabbled in a little bit in mentioning some organizations that you were a part of and partnering with. Um, can you tell us more about those and how we could partner alongside of you and how we can get more involved? Absolutely. So um, there's a lot of great organizations out there. The one that I personally support and my business supports is King's Ransom Foundation. Freaking love KRF um, for a lot of different reasons. One of the biggest ones is the fact that 100% of the proceeds go straight to the people that you think it's going to. Um, and I really like that. Um, so I share a little bit earlier that it like infuriates me that people do not have access to clean water. And one of the um, programs, one of the, yeah, I guess programs works. One of the initiatives that KRF um, goes with is bringing people clean water for life. And I love the fact that $11 gives somebody clean water for life. Like think about this for a second. A Chick-fil-A meal costs $12. If you eat at home one day and don't go to Chick-fil-A, like you can give somebody clean water for life. So Dang. yeah, King's Ransom, you can go to kingsransomfoundation.org and then they have all the different projects, which are amazing, like freeing girls from the sex trade, like helping people in Nicaragua, like incredible ones um, or projects that you can help support. That's amazing, Mary. I have never heard of an organization other than King's Ransom where 100% of what you give actually goes to help those people. And I've and looked it up. And I know they do that because they have a private donor taking care of all their operational costs so that whatever comes in that you give actually goes to these people that need help. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So thank you so much for mentioning that. Um, one last question for you is, to be really specific. So again, I know people who are listening that maybe have gone through the same things that you have been through. Maybe they've had relationships with their parents that were strained. Maybe they themselves have been abused and victims of abuse. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, I know. But if you could share one thing and say one thing to that person who is struggling right now, what would you say to them? Um, I would say that there's power in your story. There's power in community. And the fact that I shared at the beginning, um, that like sharing it is sometimes like poop your pants scary. Um, like sharing whatever it is that you've like been through, experienced any of that, but taking one step. So like sharing it with one person, when you're going to like, there's power in vulnerability and there's power in sharing that with somebody else. But just knowing that like you were seen, you are heard and like you are worthy. Like you are so worthy as you are. You are not, you are a human being. You are not a human doing. So you do not need to do anything extra in order to like deserve that worth. So it doesn't matter what it's looked like. If your story is like mine or if it's not, um, like you are so worthy and there's power in that vulnerability. Wow. So good friend. I know you just spoke life into somebody who really needed it right now. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for your courage, your boldness, and the beautiful presence that you have today in, in choosing to take action and choosing to take the steps that you needed to take to further progress in your journey of healing, your further, your further, your journey of further freedom and light. And I'm just so proud of you. Thank you for your love for your family. Thank you for your love and your honor of your mom and dad. Thank you for your love for our community and wanting to give back. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for inspiring every single person who's listening. And thank you for choosing to show up and inspire the world that their story matters and that there's so much light on the other side of so much pain and so much darkness and that that light 
and that freedom that you can experience on the other side is worth it. You are embodying that, my friend, and you are blazing a trail that people want to follow. And not just because you're good at what you do, but because your very essence screams freedom. It's been an honor to be here with you today. Thank you. You're incredible, Jen. What the heck? Like, girl, uh, first of all, I received that. And second of all, like, uh, the Lord's doing so many things through you. I like, feel like I can't follow that, but like, thank you for having the overcomers movement and like sharing other people's stories. Cause if you've made it one thing clear, it's not about you. It's about the father. And it's about like sharing that and like setting captives free. Yes. And like that in itself takes humility. So like you rock, like if you're listening to this, like you rock, you deserve air horn. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Bye friend. I love you so much. Love you. Wow. Um, Wasn't that powerful? Do you have an overcomer story? Do you know someone who needs to hear this message? Please share this video on your social platforms and tag us so we know who you are. Stay tuned as we share more overcomer stories in the weeks ahead. We're looking for you. We're looking for the overcomers. Join us. Let's come together as the overcomers. Start sharing your story. We have multiple ways you can start getting involved and repping the movement, repping your story of what he has done in your life. For example, we've got journals. You can start writing your story down. Start getting it out of your head and on paper. We've got bracelets. Start repping that we're a group that are coming together to inspire people. We've got t-shirts and sweatshirts to not only remind yourself that you're filled with gold, but everybody around you, that your story is powerful. And don't forget, you can pick up a copy of Finding His Voice on Amazon, an overcomer's journey from suicide to success, an overcomer's journey which launched this very movement. And last but not least, if you wanna learn how to overcome, visit www.dannyjohnson.com. That's my coach, and that's where I learned how to overcome. Thank you so much for joining with us today. We believe in you, and we believe in the power of story. We believe in your story.